In The Golden Bow, James Fraser examines elements of religious and scientific beliefs and theorizes that all mythologies revolve around the periodic death and resurrection of a king. This sacrifice is said to be done for the benefit of the community. His book was not well received due to his inclusion of the Christian story of Jesus. However, he gives his theory credence by presenting various religious stories such as those of Osiris, Adonis, and Addis. Although the king-killing component of his theory has been cut from most modern stories, the sacrifice, death, and resurrection elements are still very much present in many popular movies we see today. In modern storytelling, Fraser's ideals serve as a plot device that more often than not give the protagonist a much-needed advantage during a time when all hope seems lost. This documentary will analyze four popular films that employ Fraser's narrative of death and resurrection. This is the story of how I died. In Tangled, we see the story of Rapunzel, who was kidnapped as a baby by Gothel and was locked away in a tower where Gothel used her magic hair to retain her youth. After 18 years, Rapunzel, who is desperate to see the world, jumps at the opportunity to leave the tower when Flynn Rider appears and promises to take her to see the lights in exchange for the crown he stole. The two make the long journey to the kingdom where they join in the festivities and get to see the lanterns released. However, Gothel, who teamed up with the Stammingtons brothers, get Eugene arrested and take Rapunzel back to the tower. After narrowly escaping execution, Flynn races to Rapunzel's tower where he is stabbed in an attempt to free Rapunzel. Rapunzel agrees to willingly leave with Gothel, only if she lets her heal Flynn, but before she gets the chance to do so, he destroys her magic by cutting her hair and sacrifices himself in the process. This causes Gothel to rapidly age and turn to dust. As Rapunzel is crying over Flynn's body, a tear containing her last bit of magic falls on his cheek and restores his life. They return to the kingdom where she is reunited with her family and the whole kingdom celebrates her return. The two eventually get married and are able to live happily ever after, all thanks to Finn's sacrifice. Frozen tells the story of princesses Anna and Elsa of Arendelle, two sisters that although once close have grown apart due to their parents' fear that Elsa's powers will cause Anna harm. On her 21st birthday, Elsa is to be crowned Queen of Arendelle, and the castle gates are open for the first time in years for her coronation. After the ceremony, Anna and Elsa get into a fight due to Anna's wish to marry Hans, a man she just met the same day. Elsa loses control of her powers, freezes the kingdom, and runs away from Arendelle to be alone in a secluded castle she built from ice. Anna teams up with a man named Kristoff and his reindeer to go bring back Elsa. However, when they get to her castle, Elsa accidentally strikes Anna in the chest and her heart begins to freeze. After consulting with the knowledgeable trolls, it is concluded that only an act of true love will cure Anna. Kristoff races to get Anna back from Arendelle so that Hans can give her true love's kiss. However, Hans betrays them and imprisons Elsa after leaving Anna to die. Anna and Olaf run to Kristoff after realizing that he loves Anna. However, on their way to him, Anna decides to sacrifice herself for her sister by shielding her from Hans' attack. Although it appears that Anna is frozen forever, this sacrifice cures her from her frozen heart since it was an act of true love. This makes Elsa realize that love is the key to control her powers and she turns everything back to normal and banishes Hans from Arendelle. Anna and Kristoff get together and after reuniting, Anna and Elsa decide to leave the gates of Arendelle open and the whole kingdom celebrates their return. In the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie, our protagonists are facing persecution from Lord Cutler Beckett, who has set out to execute anyone associated with piracy and aims to eradicate all pirates. This crisis compels the nine pirate lords around the world to hold the Brethren Court. However, since Jack Sparrow, the pirate lord of the Caribbean Sea, is stuck in Davy Jones' locker, his crew must steal maps from Singapore to find the locker and rescue him. After they escape Davy Jones' locker and make it to the Brethren Court, Elizabeth is named Pirate King and she decides that the only way to end Beckett's attack is to band together and defeat Davy Jones, who is under Beckett's control and is his biggest asset. As the battle begins between the pirates and the navy, a giant maelstrom traps the Black Pearl and the Flying Dutchman as the two battle each other. Davy Jones, after seeing that Will and Elizabeth love each other, fatally stabs Will in the chest and leaves him to die. However, Jack, who has Davy Jones' heart, helps guide Will's hand to stab the heart, killing Davy Jones and making Will his successor. 
The Dutchman sinks and the Maelstrom disappears, leaving the Black Pearl to fight against Lord Beckett's fleet. Just as Beckett prepares to attack, the Flying Dutchman re-emerges with Will as its captain, and together with the Black Pearl, they defeat Beckett's fleet of ships and kill him in the process. After this victory, Will gives Elizabeth his heart for her protection, and the two have a son together, and Jack and his crew of pirates, now free from persecution, continue to sail the Black Pearl and search for treasure in the sea. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is the final installment in a series of 8 movies that span over 7 years. In this last movie, we see our protagonists fighting the battle that the last 7 movies have been leading up to. Over the course of the film, we see Harry, Ron, and Hermione evading Death Eaters while finding and destroying Voldemort's hitting Horcruxes in order to weaken his defenses and eventually defeat him. They return to Hogwarts to find and demolish the remaining Horcruxes, and shortly after, a battle ensues when Voldemort's Death Eaters attack the castle. While his friends locate and destroy the remaining Horcruxes hidden throughout the castle, Harry is able to see his dying professor's memories and realizes that 17 years ago, when Voldemort killed his parents and failed to kill him, a piece of Voldemort's soul was unintentionally put into Harry, turning him into a Horcrux. After this realization, he leaves his friends to turn himself over to Voldemort, who immediately kills him. In the afterlife, he sees his old mentor Dumbledore that tells him that since there are two souls inside of him, he can choose to continue on into the afterlife or he can come back to life and finish the fight against Voldemort. Harry, to the surprise of his friends and family, comes back to life and is able to defeat the now weakened Voldemort and win the battle at Hogwarts. Harry's death not only destroyed a horcrux that Voldemort didn't even know he had, but it also gave the Death Eaters a false sense of victory, which is what eventually led to their demise. Thanks to his death at resurrection, Harry and his friends save the wizarding world and grow up to have their own families in a world that is free of Voldemort. Although at first glance, Fraser's sacrificial narrative may seem old-fashioned and archaic, there are endless modern examples of death and resurrection present in all genres of entertainment. Maybe the reason we enjoy these stories so much is because we feel that our lives could be meant for something much greater than we think, or perhaps we feel comforted by the notion that someone will go to great lengths to ensure our happiness. Either way, there is no denying that Fraser was correct in stating that death and resurrection play an integral role in myths and storytelling. 